Hafidi Todis Hamzu, thank you for your participation in today's virtual public hearing. This virtual public hearing is convened by the Committee on Heritage and the Arts, Parks, Guam Products, Haganya Revitalization, Self Determination, and Regional Affairs. For the record, in accordance with open government law, public hearing notices were given to all senators, stakeholders, and all main media broadcasting outlets, with the first notice being distributed on Tuesday, May 5th. 2020, and the second notice on Sunday, May 10th, 2020. The virtual public hearing is uh, notice is also posted on the legislature's website at www.guamlegislature.org. Today is Tuesday, May 12th, 2020, and the time is uh, 2.40. This virtual confirmation hearing is now called to order. To do us Maasi again for your virtual attendance to this afternoon's hearing. On the agenda for this afternoon's virtual confirmation hearing are the appointment of Drima Asor to serve as a member of the Department of Parks and Recreation Commission and the appointment of Rolando C. Cepeda to serve as a member of visual arts of the Guam Council on the Arts and Humanities Board of Directors. The committee will receive oral testimony for E. Magahaga's nominees and will continue to accept written testimony from the general public, which will be made part of today's public hearing record. Joining me this afternoon for this virtual public hearing in no particular order are um, let me take a, a look around and make sure that I acknowledge everybody. So I have uh, Senator Joe Senegasin, who is a committee member. I have Senator Regine Biscoli, who is also a committee member. We have uh, Senator Amanda Shelton, who is legislative secretary and a committee member. We have Senator Tello Taitagui, who is a minority leader. We have uh, Oh, okay, I was thinking we might have one or two more uh, that had signed up to possibly participate, but uh, they may be joining us later. But this is Masi for everybody who has made it in. So uh, thank you colleagues for your attendance at this virtual confirmation hearing. And as I mentioned, other senators may be joining us later on during the hearing. So also joining us this mm -hmm. afternoon we have confirmed registered virtual participants. We have Mr. John Birch, who is the Department of Parks and Recreation Director. We have Gillette Leon Guerrero, who is CAHA Director. We have Drima Asor, who is up for nomination. She is the Department of Parks and Recreation Commission nominee. And uh, shortly, we hope to be getting on board um, Mr. Rolando Zepeda, who is the CAHA board nominee. We have Mr. Roland Villaverde, who is one of my committee staff, and Mr. Victor Lujan, who is also one of my committee staff, and they are helping facilitate today's hearing. So thank you so much for joining me. Before we receive oral testimonies from each nominee listed on our virtual public hearing agenda, I'd first like to provide some general rules of conduct for all of those who are participating in and are in attendance. The conduct of this hearing shall be as follows. All participants must abide by rules of conduct and quality assurance standards, including broadcasting from a quiet room with little to no interruptions. Broadcasting from a room with adequate lighting, specifically to ensure that a participant's face is not backlit, but visible at all times when speaking. Please ensure that you are unmuted and that you are speaking clearly into your microphone. The chair will invite a nominee in the order listed on the agenda, and then recognize individuals who have signed up to testify on the nominee. Individuals providing oral testimony shall first be recognized by the chair before speaking and shall state their name and title for record purposes. In order of questioning, 
We will begin with the panel of senators who will, excuse me, who shall complete their lines of questioning for each nominee. Each member will be allowed to pose one question to the nominee and the, then be provided another round if needed to ask necessary questions to the nominee or the testifying panel. Oral testimonies received shall be confined to the substance or nature on the agenda. Personal inference as to the character of the nominee, a senator or any individual testifying is not permitted. Any violation of these general rules of conduct will result in removal from the virtual public hearing by the host. I ask that all participants keep their comments or testimony within five minutes. So with that out of the way, half a day, the work of a board or commission member involves much volunteer time and commitment and provides an important link between the public and the agency, the legislature and Imagahaga. Each board or commission is unique in its purpose, mission and role. It is especially important that members must be familiar with their board's governing statutes or other authorizing directives so that they understand the framework within which the board must operate. I'd like to call upon Dreema Asor to provide her testimony to serve as a member of the Department of Parks and Recreation Commission. And then I will receive testimony of individuals who are confirmed to participate in her nomination. I'd like to acknowledge the director of the um, of CAHA who is uh, participating knowing that uh, she is very busy with uh, other obligations, but we are very appreciative that she is able to participate in today's virtual hearing. So first, as I mentioned, we'll start with recognizing Jerima Asor to serve on the Department of Parks and Recreation Commission to provide her testimony and general comments to the committee uh, panel. So, with uh, Ms. Dreema Asor, if you'd like to go ahead and begin, um, just make sure that you're unmuted and then begin with your name and you may begin your testimony. Thank you, Senator Marsh. Am I coming in okay? Thank you and half a day, honorable senators and participants in this hearing. This is my first time being nominated to a position of such a capacity. I am truly honored by this appointment by the Honorable Governor Ludion Guerrero and recognize the privilege to serve as a member on the Department of Parks and Rec Recreation Commission. My name is UM Dreema Maria Sor, but I usually go by Dreema Asor. You do not know me or my family because we are not natives to Guam, but we have lived here since 2008. Since then, I married a man who was born and raised on Guam. I have been employed mainly in the private sector on the island, and I obtained my bachelor's degree from the University of Guam in business administration with a concentration in international business. My participation in the local community started during my educational years at UOG. I served as the vice president and then president of the Chuki Student Organization, where we partnered with U the UOG Research Center, Cancer Research Center, assisting with research in the Chuki's community. And also I served as vice president and president of the UOG Soroptimist Sigma Society, working with partners in the community to empower young women. I currently work at Matson, an organization that is also very committed to empowering the communities they service. And I am part of a task force created by the FSM Association of Guam and the FSM Consulate Office with the goal to find solutions for the recurring issues in the FSM community on Guam. Finally, as a member of the local community, I too enjoy and appreciate the Department of Park and Recreation's facilities 
and its goals of promoting healthy, active lifestyles for locals and visitors, and especially the preservation of um, Guam's rich culture and historic sites. I attend and participate with the youth in community sports activities and other functions at various uh, location, various facilities. I understand that the department has its challenges and what more now with the coronavirus threat, but I would like to reassure you that my acceptance of this nomination includes my commitment to serve the interest of the community. Thank you. Sajus Masi, uh, Miss Adrima, you know, I got a little ahead of myself. We do have two nominees today, and I, I jumped straight to Kaha. But we do have uh, the director of the Department of Parks and Recreation, and obviously it makes sense that he would be the one <laughs> who is going to be testifying on your behalf. So I'd also like to recognize Mr. John Birch, the director of the Department of Parks and Recreation, to provide his testimony and general comments to the committee and the panel. Um, Mr. or Director Birch, you may proceed. Yes, good afternoon, Senator. And uh, I apologize for the video. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm getting it right. I couldn't pick up the or get online with my computer, so I'm using my cell phone. So at least I'm here. But thank you, Senator uh, Marsh, uh, for allowing me this opportunity to testify in support of the Governor Lou Leon Guerrero's uh, nomination of Ms. Uh, U.M. Drima Astor uh, to serve as a member of the Department of Parks and Recreation's uh, Commission. And with the consent of the Guam Legislature, her appointment to the DPR Commission will help us to meet our mission of setting policy and direction for the Department of Parks and Recreation. Uh, serving on the DPR Commission requires responsibility and commitment. And along with the DPR Commission's regular monthly meetings will of course be uh, work sessions, community meetings, testimonies at public hearings before the Guam legislature and participation in various community uh, functions throughout the year whenever needed. So I look forward to uh, Ms. Ashworth's appointment to the DPR Commission and I thank her for agreeing to join us in this hard but very rewarding work. Therefore, I humbly request the legislature to move forward and quickly in filling this fifth commission position. And thank you for allowing me this opportunity to testify in support of Ms. Ashworth's nomination. Thank you. To do this, Mahasi, director, and it's uh, very important to hear from the director himself um, as you two would be working closely together. So as he mentioned, a commission membership like this comes with a lot of responsibilities and the Department of Parks and Recreation is no small <laughs> department. It yes, has quite a lot to it. It has um, oversight over the public cemetery, the territorial park system, various recreational facilities, including the Paseo Stadium, um, the pools, and tennis courts, uh, among other facilities, and including having responsibility over personnel like lifeguards and uh, territorial park patrol officers and others. So there are quite a few facets to it, certainly. <laughs> um, so with this, the responsibility includes discussing matters that are relevant to the all of the things that I mentioned, working closely with uh, the director Birch and doing this on behalf of the community so that uh, all of those things are benefiting the community the most. So with that, I'll go ahead and move this on to the committee so that they may be asking their round of questions. So as a reminder, each member will be allowed to pose one question to the nominee, and then if needed, or uh, the director, if, if he as somebody who is testifying, if that is important too as well. Um, 
will be allowed to pose one question to the nominee or those testifying. And then if needed, uh, we will provide another round of questions. So with that, um, I'll go ahead and start with the Legislative Secretary, uh, Senator Amanda Shelton. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. And uh, thank you, Director Birch, for your testimony. And Druma, thank you very much to answer, for answering the call to service from the governor and the lieutenant governor. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, you mentioned yourself in the in your testimony that you know uh, the department is faced with many challenges and I'm glad to hear that you are willing to commit to it. I'm sure you know the the term of your service will is a four year term and that's a that's a pretty long commitment so I look forward to what you'll be able to do serving on this uh, in this position. Uh, I know that you uh, I've known you from the University of Guam, and I see you at so many community events with Matson. Uh, you're very involved and very busy, and I just would like to know if you have any uh, specific uh, goals in mind for, for your role and your time on this board and uh, what you plan to do. Um, yes. So... My main goal, or my first goal, being that I'm still very new, um, is to learn and master the duties and responsibilities involved or required in this position. Um, and I'm pretty sure once I get to know more, I can I can be able to set um, in further goals after that. One of my one of my visions. When I first heard about, um, you know, being nominated, is I would like to somehow have, um, be involved with activities that would encourage the youth on Guam to be more cognizant of the value and essence of um, the facilities that the department takes care of, and you know, contribute ideas or be a part of the upkeep and beautification of it. Oh, thank, thank you very much. You know, just a couple of months ago, we had oversight hearings for the, or an oversight hearing for the Department of Parks and Recreation. And many of the young people who are part of the swim teams were there and really showed their interest and their desire to be a part of, uh, of making it a better place. And I, I think that's great that you value their, um, their opinion and you want them to, to be a part of it. And so I encourage you to really see that through and to work together with all of them because uh, they were very bright and spoke so eloquently about, you know, what they, they saw and what they were experiencing and had some great ideas to help us uh, to move forward. So I'm glad to hear that. Thank you so, so much, Dreema, and you have my support. Thank you. Next, uh, we'll move to Senator Joe San Augustine. I believe he's still here. Oh, there he is. Okay. Thank, I, thank you, Senator uh, Kelly. Um, uh, uh, one general question to uh, Dreema. Are, are you familiar with uh, Title 21, Chapter 77? I am not right now, but I can look up on that okay, further. Please, uh, 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 please do, Dreamer, because I'm going to support your appointment. Um, you know, uh, thank you, John, for uh, supporting our appointment. But uh, when you do look it up, uh, Dreamer, you're going to find that you folks in the commission, you appoint the director. You decide the fate of Parks and Rec if you really look at it. And when we do have the uh, budget hearing, I'll be expecting the commission members to be present during those hearings. When we start having problems at, at Parks and Rec, um, you know, the way the law is written is that uh, the uh, the director is ex officio member at the commission hearings, but you guys are in charge. If anything's going to fall through the cracks, we're going to be looking at you folks and saying, fill the cracks. Get the department going. Okay. Thank you, Senator Kelly. So, Zeus Maasi, Senator uh, Trima, did you want to make a comment before we move to the next senator? I, I understand. 
Okay, very good. Uh, next, we have Senator Regine Biscoli. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, hot today, Mrs. Soar, and I want to say thank you very much for accepting the governor and lieutenant governor's uh, appointment on this board. Um, I, I agree with uh, Senator Shelton and Senator St. Augustine. It, it is going to take quite a lot of work and a, a big commitment. As you know, um, DPR is in charge of so many different government assets across our island, and it's really important that we continue to maintain those. And so my question for you is, um, I think that's a, been a big um, contentious and, and really challenging part of the department's mission over the last few years is just maintaining their facilities, whether it's park facilities like uh, down the street from me at EPAL Park, or uh, like Senator Shelton mentioned, Haganya Pool, uh, Dededo Pool, all of those things require you know, a lot of maintenance and definitely for the director to stay on top of that, but also for the board. And so I wanted to, um, it was really great to hear you talk um, about encouraging youth engagement and participation in park activities. But I also wanted to just ask you, what are your ideas to improve park maintenance and making sure that we maintain what um, DPR has purview over? At this time, I am still reviewing um, the bylaws and, uh, you know, uh, the only really thing I know about the department is what I've seen in the media and what I've been provided. But I am eager to work with the rest of the members of the commission to get to know, um, you know, what our strategies are in terms of maintaining uh, the facilities enforcing or establishing strong partnerships in the community and, you know, working to support um, the members in whatever decision we come up with. I think uh, your previous response to Senator Shelton was a really good one and it really, you know, acknowledges that DPR cannot do this job alone. It's going to require everybody in the community coming together, everybody in the community really taking ownership of, of these places. And so I really want to impress upon you and ask you to please, you know, um, help us to be on top of this, help us to be on top of maintaining these valuable resources in our community. Um, and, you know, I think that lends itself to other kind of issues in the community like illegal dumping and, and you know, just all of the ways that our, our lands are mistreated and our resources are kind of squandered. So this is a very important uh, role on this board and we're really looking forward to having you and the other board members really step up and make sure that we maintain our, our public parks. So I'm gonna ask you for your commitment to do that today. And again, I want to thank you uh, for stepping up and answering the call. Thank you, Madam Chair. Senator Bossi, uh, Senator Lee, and uh, Ms. Azor. Yes, this is a very good conversation. And really, uh, just to chime in for a minute before I move on, um, and that's something that we really need the both the commission members as well as the director to be very innovative if that's what's needed to get that community stakeholdership because we do have these assets that do need to be valued as you stated and they do need to be uh, maintained and maybe community stakeholdership and, and other means are ways to get to that. So with that, um, I will move to the minority leader, uh, Senator Tello Taidegui. Sidhu Asmasi, Madam Chair, and Hafa uh, Jima. Wow, I, I have to admit, I love your name. Uh, very unique, it's a very beautiful name. So you're, you're one name I won't forget. <laughs> but thank you, thank you so much for stepping up to the plate. Uh, it is like all my colleagues, I'm not gonna repeat what they said because you know how important it is and, and uh, there's 
some of us who have, really takes park, park and rec to uh, um, hold them to a higher level, um, not only us, but I think the public as well. And it's not just us, but really the public. Um, so that being said, Dreama, I hope that um, if anything, uh, when you're doing some of your research, that you also look into procurement. Procurement's very important and to understand um, the rules and regulations of procurement and what you can and cannot do is gonna be very helpful for you. Uh, we know we had some issues uh, last time about procurement and it was brought up. So that's something you might really wanna um, uh, look into or study up on along with the other rules and regs. However, um, so my question is, and again, thank you for stepping up to the plate. Uh, I, I think, Madam Chair, you're going to allow us to have another round, so I'll just ask one question. And that question is, what experience or, or strength that you have that you can contribute to Parks and Rec? Oh, unmute yourself, please. Don't forget. My main contribution at this point would be um, that I am hardworking. I'm a good team player and my willingness to help is genuine. In addition to that, I, um, like I said, my vision was to, you know, reach out into the communities. I understand that, you know, I'm sure Department of Rec, uh, Parks and Rec already has established partners, but I believe I could bring in like another angle to those partnerships to um, encourage the community to be more involved and connected with the parks and the facilities. That's good. I like the genuine part. That sounds very <laughs> good. Thank you so much for that. That's important. So Madam Chair, I'll reserve my next question on the next round. Thank you. Just Masi, uh, Minority Leader. And uh, for myself, I mean, I know it's a, a lot that we're throwing at you, but um, as has been mentioned, it's an important department. It's got a lot of oversight and elements. And our community really heavily depends on our beaches and our parks and our facilities. So we really need to make these available for them and, and be maintaining them. One of the things that I've been observing in my time here is that perhaps there are um, just different ways that we're utilizing some of the facilities. And maybe that's some of what's going on as well is we're thinking about our environment and our facilities differently. So along with the others, I really appreciate that you're hoping to tackle trying to get that community stakeholdership back in and having them realize and value what they have. Um, with this, you know, we, we do, we have new technology right now. We have social distancing that may be with us for the next couple of years or so. Um, maybe you haven't thought about it really deeply yet, but um, do you have thoughts about perhaps using the parks differently? One of the ones that I know that they've been working on are dog parks. So uh, there may be something like that that you've seen uh, or thought about as an activity or even just bringing back a good old fashioned activity that doesn't occur there anymore. Did you have any thoughts about some of those uses of the parks and helping people envision or re-envision them? Well Well, you're right. I haven't, um, I haven't thought that far yet, as far as you know, recreating purpose for the um, for the parks. Um, or, I would really first like to consult with the other members of the board before I get into, um, you know, thoughts or disclose any information on that. And I think with uh, the membership, as we've seen it uh, going in, that we have people that are very energetic, such as yourself, and others that are coming from a wide diversity of using 
our facilities. Uh, we have swimmers and paddlers and others that are in there. And so I'm really pleased to see the direction the, the commission is going in because I think uh, perhaps that's a real strength. Those that are interested in seeing people using it and um, those that are users of it themselves. So with that, um, I'll go ahead and see if other senators have other questions. I know the minority leader does. Uh, Senator Joe San Augustine, do you have another question, a second question or a comment? Thank you, Senator Kelly. Well, you know, um, I dream of just looking at your packet. I, 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 like, I like how your packet is set up. Um, you were, if I'm correct, um, you went to the University of Guam and you also got an associate degree. Prior to the University of Guam, you got an associate degree from San Diego College. And then you're, you're a sales assistant, administrative assistant, retail accounting. I, I like it because it, it deals in numbers. I have to admit that just looking at this, um, I look forward to your participating in the budget and, and you sitting down and actually taking a look at, at, at how the parks are set up because you do understand that currently the parks and rec, uh, the Department of Parks and rec Recreation is, is fully uh, funded by the TAF, Tourist Attraction Fund. And as long as GVB is losing money on TAF, the question now is to, is to figure out, the commission needs to figure out with the recommendation of the, of the director is, is how to turn this around. How to make maybe the uh, the park more self-sufficient and and get the community involved and other business people involved and just your 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 resume you know your your packet says a lot about you and I, I'm looking forward to how you were able to help help manage parks and rec because uh, at this point money is going to be funding is going to be the issue and there's very limited and um, we we need we need to hear from the commission. And I do look forward in, in supporting your nomination and your uh, and seeing you on the commission, and then we'll move from there. You will be hearing from my office definitely as soon as as soon as you, you're approved. You will be hearing from me. All right. Thank you, Senator Kelly. Uh, Senator Lee, did you have a second question or comment? Okay. So, Senator Tello Taitigui, Minority Leader, you were next. Jesus Masi again. Um, thank you again, Dreema. And um, to Director Birch, thank you so much for being here today. It's uh, nice to see the director here uh, supporting who's coming on and appreciate all the hard work you're doing over at Parks and Rec. Um, Dreema, the last, I think it's just a comment, you know, if you can just take a little notes here and, and those are uh, look into cameras. Uh, cameras are very efficient when it comes to uh, keeping an eye with the, the lack of manpower that you have for safety purposes as well as vandalism. Um, I know it's so disheartening, you know, you have a nice facility and then someone goes and trashes it. So uh, cameras become a very good deterrence as well as, you know, a, a safety uh, mechanism. The other one, of course, I said is procurement. And I believe that uh, uh, the third one is you brought up earlier about uh, partnerships, you know, working with the community. And this is a great opportunity. Um, our Senator of Oversight uh, on OFB mentioned a budget. Well, this is a great opportunity now since we're looking at the issue of revenue through TAF coming into TAF. Uh, public private partnerships um, would be very helpful. And I know that you have worked with a great company that does a lot of contributions to our community. So uh, it's nice to know we have an in at Parks and Recs with Nats. And so <laughs> we're taking advantage of your position there, but public-private partnerships are a great mechanism too when, when uh, funds are very strapped. So again, I appreciate it, Dreema. I love your name again. Uh, it's just a beautiful name and uh, looking forward to assisting you in any way I can. So please feel free to call on me. My office is always open if you need anything at all that I can assist you with to make your job better. Thank you so much. Minority Leader. So as with the other senators, um, not necessarily many more questions, but maybe just a couple of points. So here it's been mentioned, one of your first responsibilities 
actually is to review and potentially appoint the director. This is one of the instances where it is the commission itself that uh, appoints uh, a director. And so that would be one of the first um, parts of your business potentially. And so just a reminder that that is coming up. If you are nominated and confirmed, then you will make the board so that it is finally impaneled enough to have its first meeting. And so uh, if this goes forward, and certainly I'm supporting your strengths that you're bringing here and your, your passion and enthusiasm for making our island better, um, we hope to see that happen very soon. And then the subsequent actions of the commission reviewing the director's uh, resume and qualifications and then uh, potentially appointing him so that everything is in order. Um, the other would be that perhaps one of the things that I would hope that would happen for you all, and maybe you can talk amongst yourselves, is to take an island-wide tour of everything that is associated with the Department of Parks and Recreation. It makes for quite a tour, but it really was an important part of my getting on board as well, is to go around the island, see the various uh, beaches and parks and just variety of facilities um, to really help understand what it is that you'll be overseeing. So at the beginning, you're going to have a very full plate um, getting yourself caught up with uh, reading through the rules and regulations. We have budget coming around the corner, but I'm really looking forward to you and your other fine uh, members that are already commission members uh, working together and serving the community. So with this, we've completed the last round of questions from the committee and panel. This concludes the confirmation hearing for Dreama Asor to serve as a member on the Department of Parks and Recreation Commission. The time is now uh, 3.15. And the last I heard that we're still having a little trouble getting Mr. Uh, Zepeda on board. So I will check in with the staff and just make sure that we can move on to our next nomination uh, confirmation hearing. Sijuis Masi, everybody, for participating in this part of the confirmation hearing.
So, so we, we are, are now going, going into, into our, our second, second nomination uh, confirmation hearing. And the time is now uh, 3.26. So we've run into a few technical difficulties, but we've sorted them out. We are going to be hearing uh, through the phone, uh, so the audio of Mr. R Rolando C. Zepeda. We are calling upon him to provide his testimony to serve as a member on the Guam Council on the Arts and Humanities Commission Board of Directors. And then we will receive testimony from individuals who are present to participate on his nomination. I'd like to acknowledge the Director of the Guam Council on the Arts and Humanities, Ms. Gillette Leon Guerrero, who is participating. And we are appreciative knowing that she is, as we mentioned for Director Birch, uh, she is very busy with a variety of obligations, but she is able to participate in today's virtual hearing. So I'd like to recognize Roland C. Zepeda to serve on the Guam Council on the Arts and Humanities Board of Directors to provide his testimony and general comments to the committee and the panel. Um, so we'll go ahead with Mr. Zepeda's testimony, and then I have two submitted testimonies that I shall read, and then we will also hear from the director of CAHA. So if we can have Mr. Zepeda uh, begin his testimony, beginning with his name. Hello, uh, buena, and half of day to all of you. I'm Mr. Rolando Zepeda, and uh, my friends, they call me Mr. Uh, me, Roly. And at school, they call me Mr. Z. And uh, I am married to Tina Zepeda. And um, uh, we've been married for 36 years right now. My wife used to teach at Bishop. And I have a daughter, uh, Christine. And she's a graduate of Academy. and. Uh, University of Guam, and she used to teach at Bishop also, and um, she's married to uh, David Hanna. Uh, he's in uh, Navy, and they're residing now at San Diego, California. And uh, and also, I'm so happy to announce to you that I'm a fully certified grandpa right now. <laughs> so I'm we're so happy. Uh, to have our grand uh, child, her name is Capiolani, and uh, to continue with the uh, okay, I'm going to start with uh, my educational background. So uh, before we left the Philippines, I was enrolled at one of the state universities uh, in the Philippines, and that is Technological University of the Philippines. And I was like taking, trying to finish my master's degree and uh, uh, majoring in engineering graphics. And and then I left, I went to uh, Saipan uh, to work as an educator. And also I finished my college also, the same university. Uh, and I have, a, uh, I, I finished BS, uh, industrial education major in drafting technology. And also, I, I finished also some technical uh, courses also from the same uh, college, uh, university. And with regards to uh, my work experience, so actually during college, I was a working student. And uh, I used to be a shoe illustrator and a designer for shoes. And um, after that, uh, I was hired as a college instructor uh, under the College of Architecture and Fine Art at uh, the same university. And then after that, I went to Saipan to work as a art teacher at Mount Carmel School. And then um, that's up to 2001. Then we moved here in Guam. 
And the uh, Sisters of Mercy uh, sponsored us to work here. And so I started uh, teaching at St. Anthony Catholic Schools. And uh, I from 2001 to 2018. So, and then after that, 2018, I moved to uh, uh, St. John's. So at present now I'm teaching at St. John's uh, School, and I am also an adjunct instructor at Pacific Island uh, University that's in Manginao. And and also uh, one okay, let me talk to you. I mean, uh, uh, okay, okay for. Uh, uh, other qualifications that I have here. Uh, okay, so I, for my accomplishments uh, during my stay or at St. Anthony, I used to do the production um, design, and then I also like coordinated. The, you know, I started with this uh, free art. Um, uh, I try to, you know, uh, help my students also to, you know, um, form this group that, you know, we donate some artworks to different uh, government agencies, such as the, uh, I could remember, was, we had some uh, artworks donation to uh, GMH, and then also we donated some artworks to, um, skilled nursing and now the reason why I you know I initiated that one because I was really inspired with you know because of when my wife got hospitalized and uh, at GMH so I went around the hospital and then also the same thing at uh, skilled nursing I saw some art pieces there so that one inspired me I said I need to do something, uh, you know, for the community also. So that's how we started the free art. Uh, and then uh, I'm also, uh, um, I was awarded uh, because of that. Um, we were the recipient of the 2009 uh, Nala Bonita Award, uh, sponsored by the Guam Chamber of Commerce. And then I, during my stay also at St. Anthony, I was um, the teacher. I got the award for uh, the teacher award for 2012 and 2013. That was sponsored by the National Citizenship Education Teacher Award by the Veterans of Foreign Wars of the United States. And to share more of uh, some more information about me I do also uh, have a license uh, because you know uh, as an artist we need to get a license um, so I do have like especially if we have like commissioned artworks so um, I did some mural paintings at uh, uh, in Tumon uh that's a travel agency um and then i did some commission also for you know the caravel designs at gpo i had some caravels uh over there designs and um, i did some workshops uh, sponsored uh, i applied uh, a grant from um, kaha and then they, I did the workshop for uh, St. Dominic Care Home, uh, and then also skilled nursing unit, and then the Catholic Social Service. And then I have some artwork, commission artwork at the Guam Power Authority, the uh, Gloria Nelson Building in Mangilao. And I also have uh, art pieces also from uh, to the Guam Regional Medical Center in Dalido. And also I have several uh, art pieces to 
information to different uh, private individuals and uh, to, uh, to discuss more about my accomplishments, uh, Kate, with regards to community service, uh, I was also one of the uh, 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 this is sponsored by the Filipino community of Guam. I was recognized as one of the 64 influential Filipinos on Guam. And then I was also a winner of the 2017 Gawad Uliran Filipino Award under the music, I mean, uh, arts. Uh, this is also sponsored by the Filipino community of Guam. And uh, also, I have I have uh, a radio show. Uh, I'm a co-founder of uh, a radio show at 101.9 FM, and we call it Kumusta Kabayan. And my co-hosts are um, we have Consul uh, Hamoy from the Philippine Consulate General's Office, and also Miss Tansy Marcos, one of my co-hosts also here. And then I used to have, we used to have also a radio show at uh, K67 radio, and we call it Pinoy Talk. And uh, another accomplishment that I have here is that I was the one who founded and organized the Guam Filipino Artists here on Guam. And then I was also... Uh, uh, representative to our 2016 Festival of the Pacific here, which is also uh, um, sponsored by the CAHA also. And then, uh, and also I was a member of the Visual Art Planning Subcommittee before, uh, during the 2016, festi uh, 2016 Festival of Art. And uh, I was also a member of the reviewing committee also for CAHA, uh, grant for the art proposed projects. Uh, this was when their office was still at Flowers Point. And then I also served as a judge to several uh, events, uh, such as the Congressional Art Competition for High School Students. This is uh, being sponsored by the Congress uh, 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 Woman Verdalio before. And then we have also the Guam Energy Poster Contest and also the Lions Club uh, Contest. And I did some also uh, solo exhibit at Bank of Guam. And then I was also uh, at the Guam Gallery of Art. And then, of course, uh, at CAHA, their annual art exhibit. And also, I will participate also for the GAPS. And uh, we did also the traveling turtle design painting, uh, which is, if you will go to uh, Tumon Plaza, you will be able to see the turtles over there. Um, so, so far, that's... Um, those are my accomplishments. And with regards to uh, uh, the uh, my uh, if if I will be part of CA and um, I have several items here that I if I will be part of it and I have some list of agendas here that I want to contribute to, to CAHA. Uh, allow me to say this. Uh, okay, so number one here is I want really to be, uh, I'll start with updating the CAHA Artist Directory. And I want also to have a monthly meeting with the CAHA Artist members. And uh, number three is I want to have, um, you know, uh, additional workshops for the artists here on island. Number four is uh, 
Uh, I want also to have uh, to have a coffee table books. Uh, this is going to be a collection of artwork, pictures, and uh, it will be good also for you know a uh, uh, display. Uh, for let's say it, it can be a giveaway to uh, the visitors here on island. And it can be distributed to the offices. Um, and then, and then, um, another one is I want to have a, uh, Kahag, uh, Grand Art Expo. It's, uh, it's like a festival of, you know, different, uh, disciplines in art. And then, uh, the last one is I want to have Kahag to have a permanent building. That has like an exhibition hall where we could showcase all the art works of the artists here on the island. Uh, I thank you for listening to me and and uh, thank you. So, Julius Masi, uh, for providing much of your background. Um, I've received, you know, we're, uh, we're new to these virtual hearings and um, through the, the first few days that we've been having them, we've run into a few different kinds of issues. Um, this one, as far as I know, I've been advised, uh, perhaps Senator Joe, is it according to the SOPs or? Um, Hi, Senator Kelly. Whether we if can I may, proceed. If I may, I just spoke to our committee on rules chair. Um, she is double checking the uh, uh, SOPs for us, but what we know right now that uh, will make all of this valid is if uh, Mr. Zapeta provides his written testimony and then we just move on from here and uh, take the testimony from everyone else in the committee. So uh, I think we'll, we'll be okay if we receive his written Rich in testimony. Okay, great. So, so to this, Masi, for that, and we'll continue to hear. Um, we've also asked legal just to make sure as we proceed on that we're proceeding accordingly. So, thanks for everybody's uh, input. Uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead. We did receive two written testimonies. So, I'll go ahead with uh, reading those into the record. Uh, one is from uh, Francis Guerrero, who is the CAHA board chair. And his testimony is Hafadeh Senator Marsh and members of the Legislative Committee. I write in support of the nomination of Mr. Rolando Zepeda as a member of the Guam Council on, on the Arts and Humanities Board of Directors. Mr. Zepeda has been very active in the art community. He also participates in many of our CAHA sponsored art events and is very passionate about his work as a visual artist. I believe he would serve conscientiously and with much dedication and would bring another fresh perspective as a member of our board. I encourage you and other members of the legislature to vote favorably on his confirmation. Okay, so uh, that's from Mr. Francis Guerrero, the board chair of the Guam Council of the Arts and Humanities. And the other testimony that we have is from uh, Jackie Balbus, who has worked at CAHA for decades now. Dear Chairwoman Marsh Taitano, Hafa Day, it is my pleasure to submit testimony in support of Mr. Rolando Raleigh Zepeda's nomination to serve as a member of the Guam Council on the Arts and Humanities Agency Board of Directors. I, met, I first met Raleigh in 2001 when he walked into the Caja Art Gallery at Two Lovers Point to register as an artist. Throughout the years, he's become an active member of the arts community. Raleigh is an artist, an educator, a proponent for the arts, and an all around nice guy. His profession as an art educator has spanned 19 years. 
with 17 years teaching at St. Anthony Catholic School and two years with St. John's School, where he is currently employed. As a teacher, he has inspired many of the students to express themselves creatively through the arts. He's encouraged his students as well as other teachers to be involved in Kaha activities, and many have attended art workshops facilitated by the Arts Council. This includes workshops in conjunction with Kaha and the Pacific Resources for Education and Learning, also known as PREL, in Hawaii. He's participated in many PREL Train the Teacher workshops, in which attendees were taught how to incorporate art in other core subjects. During his time at St. Anthony Catholic School, his students were charged with creating ornaments reflective of Guam's rich culture that were hung on the Guam tree, along with the other 55 trees representing the states, territories, and the District of Columbia that surround the National Christmas Tree during the yearly event in Washington, DC. Many of his students have won art competitions and have gone on to careers in the arts. A talented artist, he has participated in many of Kaha's ex exhibitions, including our annual Arts and Humanities Month celebration. He served as president of the Guam Filipino Artist Association and was instrumental in partnering with the Philippine Consulate General to have monthly art exhibits showcasing artwork by our local Filipino artists at the consulate office. During his tenure as GFA, excuse me, GFA, the Guam Filipino Artist Association, he partnered with Kaha on the art and the association's annual art exhibit, in addition to their annual Christmas patrol, excuse me, parole, uh, lantern making contest. He's assisted Kaha and served as a judge for many art contests. Raleigh was selected as one of the 13 artist finalists for the $70,000 commission for the new GRMC's hospital lobby. As an artist, Raleigh was commissioned through Kaha's Percent for the Arts to create artwork for the Gloria Nelson GPA slash GWA facility in Manila. He was an official Guam Visual Arts Delegate to the 12th Festival of Pacific Arts in 2016. He is a former Kaha grant recipient and has conducted Kaha art programs that service the underserved community, especially the Manumku. Living on Guam for nearly 20 years, Raleigh has demonstrated that his love and passion for art is an important facet of his life. And he continues to share that passion with the young and old alike. He has expressed to me many times that Kaha needs a permanent home. I believe that by him serving on the Kaha board, he will bring a fresh perspective to the table and that the council and the arts on Guam will flourish. To do Maasi for this opportunity to provide testimony in support of Mr. Zapeta and for your favorable consideration of his appointment to the Kaha Board. Respectfully, Jackie Balbus, Program Coordinator 4. So with that, I'd like to recognize Ms. Gillette Leon Guerrero, Director of the Guam Council on the Arts and Humanities Board of directors to provide her testimony and general comments to the committee and the panel. So just Masi for your uh, patience through, you've been here since the very first nomination through some of our technical difficulties and uh, working our way through them. Uh, so thank you for that, Ms. Leon Guerrero, uh, the director of CAHA. Thank you, thank you. Um, I'd just like to clarify, I'm the director acting. I think I'm going to be in the hot seat <laughs> with you guys. If we could have you, if there's a way to um, increase the volume or sit closer to your computer so that it's a little louder. And then if you could start with your name and your position. Can you hear me now? Oh, hi. Why is that? Um, it was fine before. I'm at the max. The maximum audio. 
is there a way to adjust it on this? Earlier, I had no trouble. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's right. Uh, perhaps it, I'm not sure if you have a desktop computer or a laptop, but if you could perhaps just be closer to it. Yeah, I'm pretty close. I'm like one foot away from it. And then uh, perhaps also just project more and speak a little louder. Hey, I can try. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? No, there's something wrong. Okay, hold on. I don't, I don't know what's wrong. Earlier when I was speaking, it was fine. Uh, uh, Ms. Ms. Gangrero, if, if you like, just go ahead and speak. I'm hoping we, you've, you've submitted something in writing and then we can work from there. Yes. I submitted something. Oh, see, when you're closer like that, it does help. It does help? Okay, well, let me get, let me get really close. <laughs> okay. All right, my name is Gillette Leon Guerrero and I am the director acting of um, Kaha. Um, I will be in the hot seat, I think, hopefully, for the confirmation hearing. So. Okay, I am uh, pleased today to provide testimony in support of the nomination of Rollins Cepeda to Kaha board. While I don't know him personally, what I've heard about him from uh, staff and his resume is impressive and showcases his expertise in art education, leadership in the arts community, organizational and communication skills willingness to collaborate and vision. All of these are valuable assets for a board member. And then I went on to uh, uh, account a lot of uh, information about what he has accomplished, which I will skip right now because um, it's in my written testimony and uh, the, other, um, the others that testified already named quite a bit of it. Um, so let me just scroll down. <laughs> okay. I think there was one thing that wasn't mentioned and that was that he conducted art programs through CAHA for the underserved community, specifically the Monomco and clients of the Catholic Social Services and the Skilled Nursing Center. So he's done a lot of community work uh, on, on Guam and he has been the founder of many organizations and it, um, it just shows that he has taken the initiative to promote the arts and like Jackie said, it's probably in his DNA. <laughs> so, over the years, he has demonstrated a commitment to the arts and arts education, a willingness to collaborate with others, and has inspired a cadre of young artists. For this reason, I wholeheartedly and without reservation support the nomination of Rolando Cepeda to the board of CAHA. And I thank you for giving me this opportunity to testify. Thank you. Sitsu Malasi for your testimony. Um, your microphone volume did increase as the time went on, so maybe it just needs some sort of warm up. I'm really not sure what was going on, but we were glad to be able to hear your testimony and we'll be receiving the written if that has not already been distributed. So I'd like to remind the committee and the panel that uh, we will go into a first round of questions, and then if there are more questions or comments, we can continue with another round. So with that, uh, we shall go ahead and begin with the Legislative Secretary, Senator Amanda Shelton. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. I know I won't pose any questions to the nominee today uh, since it, it would be a difficult back and forth and we're going with his written testimony here. But for the record, I would just like to say that I've known uh, Mr. Zepeda for many years. He was actually my art teacher in middle school. And uh, I've known him uh, more recently with uh, through his activities with the Filipino community of Guam and the Filipino Artists uh, Associate or organization. Uh, I've attended many of their events and his showcases, and uh, especially through his work with students and uh, working with uh, Congresswoman Berdalio's office. So I, I recognize his uh, passion and his sincerity in all the work that he does, especially working with young people, uh, as he did with me at a very young age. And so I look forward to uh, him uh, uh, being able to confirm him in our next session. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Sijuas Maasi for that, that provides uh, additional breadth of our understanding 
of him. So that's very good. Senator Joe San Augustine. Thank you, uh, uh, Senator Kelly. Uh, you know, I'm lo looking at his, at his packet, um, that's amazing. He, he was the art teacher for Senator Amanda. We, I think we graduated about the same time. So, um, and, and his, his packet is quite impressive. So just looking at that and, and all the work he's done, I'm looking forward to seeing him do more work. And, and for the acting director and anybody else that's on this view, um, we got a budget hearing coming up soon, so I hope you got your stuff all together so we can start working on how you're being funded, what grants you're going out uh, trying to get, and uh, just be prepared. I look forward to Mr. Zapeta participating and uh, hopefully the nomination goes through and everything works right and we'll see him on, on the budget hearing. All right, thank you, Senator Kelly. To do is Yes, and I knew you were going to be going to into that direction. You're right. The uh, the board does have the oversight over their budget, and um, they do direct a lot of their programs and stuff. And so it does come with that fiscal responsibility. Next, we have um, the minority leader, uh, Senator Senator Talo Taidegui. To do as Madam Chair. Um, I, I really wish I could see you, Rolando, you know, and, uh, but uh, fortunately we understand the situation that we're in, but you know, your packet has a picture of you. So I was kind of looking at that while you were talking as well. So um, trying to imagine, but um, again, I appreciate uh, you stepping up to the plate, uh, having the rec, um, what is it? A recommendation from Francis Guerrero, who I know very well, uh, as a musician to uh, recommend you that you come highly qualified um, is saying a wealth about uh, your ability to do the job. Um, and just listening from him, um, and I've known him for years, uh, I can take that for uh, as a support from me as well. I appreciate it. Uh, if there's anything that, um, I ask you to consider is that uh, procurement, uh, look into procurement law. It's going to be very helpful for you. And um, to be there to continue to encourage the younger artists out there, to encourage them that uh, it might not be a great way of making some money, but it definitely brings a lot of um, people, a lot of happy people seeing the art around the island and, and beautifying it with all these murals that have been put up. It's just amazing. And I hope that you continue to encourage that kind of community outreach as well. And I wish you luck too, Gillette. Um, and looking forward to your confirmation hearing. I've known you for a long time. So again, thank you, Madam Chair, for the opportunity. Thank you. <laughs> to do as Masi for that minority leader. And, uh, you know, I agree as well. It's very important to hear the testimony of those that we've known for a good while and to have the strong testimony of Mr. Guerrero, to have it of Jackie Balbus and Gillette Leon Guerrero. Um, those do speak volumes to his artistic ability, but then also the diligence with which he will be serving on the commission. And so that, that's uh, very important because we do want people that are going to take this responsibility very seriously. Uh, that's important to us. It's important on the behalf of our community. And uh, there's so much to be gained from that. And it was very good that we heard some of his thoughts and ideas going forward. Um, he'll be there with a pretty good sized board. So um, I'm sure they've been very active thus far. I'm sure he will contribute to that and then the dynamics will work all together. So um, with that, I, I do want to recognize that we have another one of the board members present. Uh, we have Mr. Joseph Certeza. Were you wanting to provide any testimony or did you want to just uh, be in attendance to provide support? Um, actually, I will provide a testimony for Mr. Zapeta. Um, Excellent. I just, I just go, go forward and 
mention my testimony yes. now? Okay. Um, yes. Hapade, my name is Joseph. We'll just Certeza. start with your name. Yeah. My name is Joseph Certeza. I am currently the vice chair of the Kaha board. And in, I do support the confirmation of Mrs. Apeda to become a part of our Kaha team. And I really look forward into um, his three things that he wanted to fulfill while during his term with us at Kaha. And those are some of the things that I also align my goals with in Kaha, which is like the artist directory. How do we improve it? How do we innovate it? How do we make it um, engageable, especially on the internet? Um, he talked about creating more awards, and I think that's the biggest thing that uh, that was one of the biggest visions that I really was um, gravitated having a conversation with here and just talking about what can we do together and what can we do to work with our fellow board members. Um, so we had it's aligned dreams as board uh, fellow board members that is going to be an awesome thing to experience moving forward with Kaha and. Um, I know of Mrs. Zapata from as an artist here on island. I always see him organizing the fellow uh, Filipino artists for, with the Filipino Arts Association and always admiring that he can organize and he can put on art shows and it is successful and it's well um, executed and it's professionally executed. So that's some of the great things that I'm going to value when Mrs. Zapata becomes a part of our Kaha team. Um, and just being a part of his radio show, I think that's a great advantage to um, our organization. And it's just one outlet for us to um, have a better outreach and better way of communicating to the, to the community. Um, and I really look forward that, uh, there, I really look forward to the, pot, uh, the potential that will come from this confirmation of Mrs. Zapata. And yes, and that will be my testimony in short. To this Masi everyone and I look forward to hearing more great stuff. So to this Masi, Mr. Uh, Certeza, the more positive testimony that we receive, we receive the better. Um, it really helps us understand his impact to the community and it helps validate all of the other testimony and, and statements that have been made. So thank you for that very much. And especially coming from both the chair and the vice chair of the board itself, that's very, very telling. So um, with this, I will go ahead and uh, move on to the next element and just put out the public reminder that the committee will re continue to receive written testimonies for over the next few days. And to please address your written testimony to the Committee on Heritage and the Arts, Parks, Guam Products, Hagatnya Revitalization, Self-Determination, and Regional Affairs and submit it by email to office.senatorkelly at guamlegislature.org or to my office located at the second floor of the Guam Congress building. With that, I want to say seduce maasi to everyone here. You've been here for quite a while. We've gone through our ups and downs with our technical issues, and I appreciate your patience uh, and your your fortitude through that all. So uh, thank you for your attendance and participation in today's virtual confirmation public hearing. Today's hearing is now adjourned. Um, the time is now for four o'clock and six minutes after four o'clock. <laughs> so 4.06. Um, have a good rest of your day. <laughs>